In the heart of Tanzania, a land steeped in the wild beauty of Africa, lies the Makaloa Reserve. Known for its sprawling landscapes and abundant wildlife, Makaloa is a haven for those seeking to immerse themselves in the raw essence of nature. Asha Mwangi, a 30-year-old Kenyan tour guide known for her radiant smile and deep understanding of the African wilderness. Samuel Niorogi, a local guide wise beyond his years with an innate ability to read the subtle language of the savanna. With her keen eyes and a heart full of adventure, Asha had found her calling in the wild expanses of Makaloa. Samuel, born and raised in the shadows of Mount Kilimanjaro, carried the wisdom of the land in his every word and gesture. On June 15, 2005, the day was typical for Makaloa, a vast blue sky stretching over an endless sea of golden grass. Asha, alongside Samuel, led their group of tourists, their hearts brimming with anticipation. The safari vehicle, a sturdy vessel in this wilderness sea, moved through the reserve, offering glimpses of Africa's majestic fauna. The group marveled at herds of elephants bathing in the mud, zebras playfully chasing each other, and giraffes elegantly browsing the treetops. Asha's explanations, infused with her passion for these creatures, made the experience all the more enchanting. The afternoon in Makaloa Reserve was serene, with the sun casting a warm golden light over the landscape. The safari vehicle carrying Asha, Samuel, and their group moved slowly through a less traveled part of the reserve. The grass grew taller here, and the sense of being in the wild was more profound. In this secluded area, a lioness lay hidden in the tall grass, her body still, her eyes alert. She was not alone. Nestled close to her were her cubs, their small forms barely visible in the dense vegetation. The lioness's instincts were tuned to the safety of her young, every sense focused on protecting them from any potential threat. The group, absorbed in the sights and sounds of the African bush, were unaware of the lioness's presence. Their attention was drawn instead to a distant spectacle, a herd of wildebeest moving across the plain in a slow, rhythmic dance of nature. As the vehicle edged closer, the lioness's attention sharpened. The proximity of the strangers to her hidden offspring triggered a primal response. In a flash, her body tensed, and then, with an explosion of power, she burst from her hiding place. The lioness's charge was a blur of speed and ferocity. Asha, who had stood up to get a better view for her guest, had her back to the lioness. She had no time to react. The lioness closed the distance with startling swiftness, her focus locked on the perceived threat. With a mighty leap, the lioness reached Asha, her jaws snapping shut on Asha's arm. The force of the impact knocked Asha off her feet her scream of pain and shock cutting through the calm of the reserve. The sound was a harrowing alarm that echoed across the savanna, sending birds flying from nearby trees. The vehicle erupted into chaos. The tourists, startled from their awestruck observation of the wildebeest, were suddenly thrown into a scene of terror. Screams filled the air, a cacophony of fear and confusion. Samuel, despite the shock, sprang into action. His first instinct was to protect his guests and assist Asha. He shouted commands to stay calm even as he maneuvered the vehicle to put distance between the lioness and the group. The lioness, her protective instincts momentarily overtaken by aggression, maintained her grip on Asha. But as the vehicle started to move and the shouts and noises intensified, she sensed the retreat of the threat. Realizing her cubs were no longer in immediate danger, she released Asha. With a final, intense glance at the humans who had invaded her space, the lioness backed away. She moved with caution and dignity, her eyes never leaving the retreating vehicle. Safely back in the cover of the tall grass, she gathered her cubs around her, ensuring they were unharmed. Asha, in shock and pain, was tended to by Samuel and some of the tourists who had first aid training. They applied a makeshift tourniquet to stem the bleeding from her arm, which was severely injured. Samuel radioed the reserve headquarters for emergency assistance. Within minutes, a rescue team arrived, their vehicle kicking up a cloud of dust as they hurried to the scene. Asha was rushed to the nearest hospital, where doctors worked tirelessly to save her arm. However, the damage inflicted by the lioness was too severe, and amputation was the only option to save her life. The news of the attack spread quickly, stirring a mix of concern and a renewed awareness of the unpredictability of wildlife. Makaloa Reserve officials emphasized that such incidents were rare, and stressed the importance of respecting the natural behavior of these wild creatures. Asha's recovery was a journey marked by resilience and an unbroken spirit. She faced her new reality with remarkable courage, 
refusing to let this incident diminish her love for the wilderness. She became an advocate for wildlife conservation, sharing her story to educate others about the importance of understanding and respecting the boundaries between humans and wildlife. Her experience served as a powerful reminder of the wild's untamed nature. Asha returned to Makaloa, not as a guide, but as an ambassador for wildlife safety. She spoke to tourists and locals alike, her message clear. Coexistence with wildlife demands respect, understanding, and caution. In the heart of Tanzania, under the vast African sky, Asha's legacy thrived. Her story resonated in the roar of lions, the rustle of the grass, and the whispers of the wind, a tale of respect, survival, and the deep, enduring connection between humans and the wild. In the vibrant city of Sydney, Australia, nestled on the outskirts where urban sprawl meets wild bushland, lies the Emerald Grove Zoo. This wildlife sanctuary was known for its commitment to animal conservation and the immersive experience it offered visitors. Among its most admired inhabitants were two majestic male lions, the brothers of Zeus and Apollo, brought to the zoo under a program to preserve their endangered species. On the clear morning of April 9, 2007, the zoo staff, including two dedicated female zookeepers, Rachel Thompson and Sophie Martin, began their day with the usual enthusiasm. Rachel, a seasoned zookeeper with over a decade of experience, had a deep affinity for big cats, while Sophie, although newer to the team, shared an equal passion for these majestic creatures. The lions at Emerald Grove were a favorite among visitors. Zeus and Apollo, with their imposing manes and noble stature, were the epitome of feline grace and power. In the wild, lions are apex predators, commanding respect and awe. Even in captivity, their inherent wildness remained unbridled, a fact the zookeepers were always mindful of. That day, Rachel and Sophie were tasked with routine cleaning and maintenance of the lion enclosure. The zoo had stringent safety protocols, and both zookeepers were well trained in handling these magnificent but potentially dangerous animals. The procedure required one keeper to remain outside the enclosure as a spotter while the other entered. As Rachel entered the enclosure, Sophie watched from the perimeter. The lions, who are usually calm during these routines, seemed more agitated than usual. The zookeepers attributed this to the slight change in their feeding schedule that day. Suddenly, without any provocation, the situation escalated. Zeus, the larger of the two lions, lunged at Rachel with alarming speed. His powerful jaws clamped down on her, pulling her to the ground. The force of the attack was tremendous and Rachel's screams filled the air, her terror palpable. Sophie, witnessing the attack, rushed to call for help. The zoo's emergency protocol was immediately activated. The other staff members, hearing the alarm, responded swiftly, but with the knowledge that entering the enclosure presented a grave danger. Inside the enclosure, Apollo, spurred by his brother's aggression, joined in the attack. Rachel, trapped under the powerful bodies of the lions, fought desperately to defend herself. Her efforts to fend off the lions were valiant, but the disparity in strength was overwhelming. The screams and roars attracted a crowd of visitors who watched in horror from a safe distance. The zoo's tranquilizer team arrived within minutes, their movements deliberate and urgent. They fired darts at Zeus and Apollo, which soon took effect, the lions' aggressive movements slowing until they finally retreated to a corner of the enclosure. In the aftermath of the brutal attack, the lion enclosure at Emerald Grove Zoo became a scene of chilling silence. Rachel, once vibrant and full of life, lay in a crumpled heap, her form barely recognizable amidst the chaos that had just unfolded. Her uniform, once a symbol of her dedication and passion for her work, was now torn and soaked in blood. Her injuries were grave. Blood pooled around her head. Deep lacerations marred her neck, the result of the lion's ferocious bites and her face was contorted in an expression of shock and pain. It was as if time had frozen in the moment of the attack, leaving behind a tableau of horror that shook even the most experienced of the first responders to their core. The ambulance officer, a veteran of many emergencies, hesitated briefly at the threshold of the enclosure. The sight that greeted him was one of absolute devastation. It took every ounce of his professional resolve to enter the scene his heart racing with the knowledge of the danger that had just passed. As he and his team approached Rachel, they moved with urgency and caution, fully aware that the tranquilized lions, though subdued, were still a looming threat in the background. 
The officer quickly assessed her condition, noting the ragged, gaping wounds and the shallow, labored breathing that indicated her precarious grip on life. With practiced hands, they applied emergency first aid, working to stabilize her for the airlift. Rachel was carefully loaded onto a stretcher, her body limp and unresponsive, as they made their way out of the enclosure. The silence was broken only by the soft murmur of the medical team and the distant, subdued roars of the lions. The helicopter journey to the Sydney hospital was tense, with the medical team fighting to stabilize Rachel. Upon arrival, she was rushed into the emergency room, where a flurry of activity surrounded her as doctors and nurses worked tirelessly to address her critical injuries. The extent of the damage was severe. The mauling had left her with life-threatening head and neck injuries, and her survival hung in a delicate balance. As she was wheeled into surgery, the grim reality set in. Rachel's fight for life was just beginning, a battle marred by uncertainty and the traumatic memories of that fateful encounter. In the aftermath of the attack, the zoo was temporarily closed. Police detective superintendent leading the investigation announced that Zeus and Apollo were secured shortly after the incident and posed no further threat. The investigation focused on understanding how such an attack could have happened, especially considering the zoo's strict safety measures. The zoo authorities faced tough questions about the incident. It was revealed that Rachel, in her familiarity with the lions, might have let her guard down, a decision that had near-fatal consequences. The zoo reviewed its safety protocols, reinforcing the training for its staff and implementing additional measures to prevent such incidents in the future. After a period of observation and assessment by animal behavior experts, it was decided to keep Zeus and Apollo at the zoo. This decision was made because their behaviors were deemed instinctual and not out of character for wild animals in such situations. Rachel's recovery was slow and arduous. The support from the community and her colleagues was immense, with many admiring her bravery and dedication. The incident at Emerald Grove Zoo served as a stark reminder of the inherent dangers of working with wild animals. It highlighted the unpredictable nature of these majestic creatures and the constant need for respect and caution in their handling. This harrowing event highlighted the delicate balance in wildlife conservation efforts, underscoring the challenges those who dedicate their lives to caring for these extraordinary animals face. It was a sobering testament to the unpredictable interface between the human and animal worlds, even in controlled environments like zoos. In a coastal town situated in Namibia in the year 2005, the whispers of an upcoming grand circus spread like wildfire. The circus, known as African Spectacle, was renowned across the continent for its mesmerizing performances and exotic animals. The highlight of the show was to be a majestic African lion tamed and trained to perform breathtaking stunts. Enter Kwame Nkrumah, a tall, sinewy man from Ghana, known far and wide for his unique ability to communicate with and tame wild animals. His reputation was legendary, with tales of him calming enraged elephants and dancing with cheetahs. The circus management, eager to have the best, called upon Kwame to train their newly acquired lion named Azibo. Kwame arrived in the coastal town to much fanfare. Having heard tales of his exploits, the townspeople were eager to witness his skills firsthand. The circus tent was pitched on the outskirts, and preparations were in full swing. Azibo the lion was a magnificent creature, his golden mane shimmering in the sun and his eyes holding the wild essence of the African plains. Kwame, upon seeing Azibo, felt an immediate connection. He believed in understanding the animal, building trust, and forming a bond rather than using force. The initial days were promising. Kwame spent hours with Azibo, talking, singing, and often sitting silently, building trust. The townspeople often watched from a distance, mesmerized by the sight of a man and a lion, seemingly in deep conversation. However, as the days progressed, it became evident that Azibo had a rebellious streak. He was a wild spirit, and the confines of the circus tent didn't sit well with him. There were moments when he'd obey Kwame, and then suddenly, without warning, he'd display his wild side, roaring and pacing restlessly. One fateful evening, as Kwame introduced a new trick involving Azibo jumping through a ring of fire, things turned for the worse. 
Perhaps it was the bright flames or maybe a sudden surge of his wild instincts, but Azebo hesitated at the ring's entrance. Sensing the lion's discomfort, Kwame approached him, speaking in soft, calming tones. But something snapped in Azebo. With a roar that echoed through the tent, he lunged at Kwame. The onlooker screamed in horror as the lion's claws found their mark, slashing across Kwame's chest and face. The circus handlers rushed in, using fire torches to distract the Zebo and pull Kwame to safety. The tent was in chaos. People rushed out in panic, and performers scrambled to control the other animals. Amidst it all, Kwame lay injured, blood staining the sandy floor. The circus's medical team rushed to his aid, tending to his wounds. The gashes were deep, but fortunately they were not life-threatening. Azebo, meanwhile, was confined to his cage, his roars of frustration and anger filling the night. As Kwame regained consciousness, his first concern was for Azebo. Kwame insisted that Azebo didn't mean it because he's a creature of the wild and that they can't cage his spirit. The night was long with the circus management in deep discussions about Azebo's fate and the future of the show. The dawn in the coastal town was somber. The vibrant energy that once surrounded the African spectacle was replaced with an air of tension and uncertainty. News of the incident had spread throughout the town, and a group had gathered outside the circus tent, their murmurs filled with concern and speculation. Inside the medical tent, Kwame's recovery was swift, a testament to his resilience. His face bore scars, a stark reminder of the previous evening's events, but his spirit remained unbroken. As he sat up, his thoughts were consumed by Azebo. Fearing another incident and potential backlash, the circus management decided Azebo would be sent to a wildlife reserve. The decision was logical, but it weighed heavily on Kwame's heart. He had formed a bond with the lion, understanding the creature's longing for freedom and the wild. Kwame requested a final meeting with Azebo. Though hesitant, the management agreed, ensuring safety measures were in place. As Kwame approached the cage, Azebo's demeanor changed. The wild aggression was replaced with calm recognition. The two locked eyes, a silent conversation passing between man and beast. Kwame whispered words of comfort and promise. Tears streamed down his face as he placed his hand on the cage, feeling the lion's warm breath. The following day, a convoy set out for the Namibian Wildlife Reserve, a vast expanse of land dedicated to preserving Africa's majestic creatures. Azebo's cage was placed on a truck, and as it moved through the town, its residents lined the streets, paying their respects and bidding farewell. Kwame accompanied the convoy, ensuring that Azebo's transition was smooth. Upon reaching the reserve, the cage was open, and Azebo hesitated for a moment, taking in his surroundings. Then, with a powerful leap, he was off, his golden mane catching the sunlight, his roar echoing, a sound of freedom and joy. Kwame watched, his heart swelling with a mix of pain and pride. He had let go of a friend, but in doing so, he had given him the greatest gift, freedom. The incident at the circus became a turning point for Kwame. He decided to dedicate his life to the welfare of wild animals, advocating against their captivity for entertainment. He established a sanctuary near the coastal town, a haven for animals rescued from circuses and zoos, giving them a chance to live in an environment close to their natural habitat. The story of Kwame and Azebo became legendary in Namibia. It was a tale of respect, understanding, and the unbreakable bond between man and nature. Schools and communities would invite Kwame to share his experiences, instilling in the younger generation the importance of coexistence and respect for the wild. Years later, a statue was erected in the coastal town of Namibia, depicting Kwame and Azebo, a symbol of harmony and the town's commitment to wildlife conservation. In the verdant heart of the Congo Basin rainforest, where the tapestry of life was unfurling in a thousand shades of green, three courageous souls embarked on a quest that would forever etch their names into the annals of exploration. In 1948, dense foliage surrounded them, whispering wonders to the winds. These wonders were the focus of Evelyn Hartfield 
Isabella Wren, and Lillian Stone as they embarked on a mission to unveil them. Evelyn, who had piercing hazel eyes and brown hair, exuded an unyielding determination that attracted the others towards her like a magnet. The fabulous brunette Isabella was fascinated with ancient mysteries as her thirst for knowledge guided their expedition. Lillian, the spirited redhead, had been the glue that had bound the trio together, as her infectious laughter had echoed through the rainforest like a musical symphony. Anticipation filled the air, thickening it as the intrepid explorers entered the labyrinthine trails. Their senses were heightened by the symphony of unseen creatures, weaving a tapestry of sound that enveloped them. Christmas Eve had arrived, and the jungle appeared to pulse with an otherworldly energy. A yearning for discovery fueled their every step, and as they ventured deeper, the forest closed in around them, embracing them like a shimmering emerald. The night descended upon them, casting its enchanting spell like a velvet curtain draped across the sky. The celestial tapestry of twinkling stars adorned the darkness, their radiant glow peeking through the dense canopy above. As the campfire flickered in the night, the trio set up their tents, their laughter cutting through the wondrous nocturnal sounds surrounding them. However, their presence was noticed by the forest. Creatures of the night, stirred by the foreign intrusion, had their every move observed by hidden eyes. As the camp settled into a tranquil rhythm, camaraderie enveloped the girls. They huddled around the fire, sharing stories of their lives and dreams. The forest was alive with the hum of insects and the rustle of unseen creatures. It absorbed their tales into its ancient fabric. Morning broke as a delicate symphony of bird calls filled the air, and the forest, basking in the gentle glow of dawn, appeared to release a collective breath. The trio was unaware that a shift had occurred in the ethereal balance of the rainforest, and that an indefinable tension had charged the air. A routine of survival emerged as the dawn broke. Blissfully unaware of the silent watchers, the trio was preparing breakfast, their laughter resonating through the tranquil glade. However, a distant rustle shattered the harmonious ambience, signaling the prelude to an unforeseen terror that lurked in the shadows. The growl reverberated through the ancient trees, its low and guttural sound filling the air. The trio became suddenly alert and exchanged glances that were filled with trepidation. A pride of lions emerged from the foliage, materializing before their eyes. Their golden eyes gleamed with predatory intent, captivating our attention. The forest, which had once been a canvas of tranquility, was now pulsating with an undercurrent of danger. The girls were frozen in terror as they watched the lions encircle their camp. The majestic, sleek, and powerful predators transformed into the living embodiment of the untamed wilderness. The trio was gripped by panic as their hearts pounded in rhythm with the drumming of primal instincts. The spectacle of survival unfolded before their eyes as two civilizations clashed in an epic encounter. It was a momentous event that pitted humanity against the untamed forces of nature, causing the veneer of civilization to crumble under the sheer might of nature's raw power. Driven by instinct, the lions closed in on their unsuspecting prey, heightening the atmosphere with an electrifying tension. When the first lion lunged, Evelyn, Isabella, and Lillian bravely fought against it. Their screams reverberated through the air, a desperate plea for salvation echoing in the heart of an unforgiving wilderness. The forest held its breath as it silently witnessed the tragedy unfold. The expeditioners residing in a nearby cabin, namely Alexei Kuznetsov, Giselle Montague and Mateo Ramirez were acutely aware of the impending calamity that loomed before them. They gained extensive experience navigating the untamed wilderness and firmly grasped their rifles. They hastily propelled themselves towards the scene of unrest, their hearts pounding in unison with the resounding thuds of their footsteps. The lions seized their prey, causing a roar that echoed through the rainforest. The expedition had arrived, their breaths coming in short gasps and their eyes wide with astonishment as they beheld the macabre scene before them. Each lion held its prey firmly in its powerful jaws, while the ruthless embrace of nature mercilessly silenced the desperate screams of the girls. The Congo Basin reverberated with a silent roar as destiny's jaws devoured dreams, leaving behind a poignant requiem. In a desperate attempt to rescue the girls, Alexei fired a shot into the air, causing the sound to reverberate through the ancient trees. The lions were momentarily startled, and they released their grip on the lifeless bodies. The forest was eerily silent as it bore witness to the aftermath. Three explorers had fallen, 
their dreams extinguished in the primal dance of predator and prey. The expeditioners, their faces filled with horror, swiftly made their way towards the fallen explorers. They applied makeshift first aid, their hands trembling with grief as the thick air weighed heavily on them. However, despite their desperate efforts, the damage proved to be irreparable. The relentless onslaught eventually overcame Evelyn, Isabella, and Lillian, who were once vibrant and full of life. The expedition, filled with grief and haunted by the silent roar reverberating through the forest, made a distress call to request assistance. The bodies, which had become lifeless forms on the canvas of the rainforest, were transported to a morgue located far away. While remaining silent, the Congo Basin witnessed a tragedy that inflicted deep scars upon the souls of those who managed to survive. This event served as a reminder of the ruthless beauty that dwelled within the untamed depths of the rainforest. As news of the ill-fated Christmas Eve expedition spread, the rainforest tightly guarded its wonders while the ancient trees stood as sentinels, witnessing a tale of dreams lost and roars silenced. The memory haunted the expeditioners and they would forever carry the weight of that fateful night. It was a night when the untamed wilderness reclaimed its dominion, asserting its power over them. The Congo Basin, a tapestry of life and death that stretched on eternally, whispered its secrets to the wind, serving as a cautionary tale for those who dared to venture onto the edge of the unknown. In the rich tapestry of South Africa's history, the year 2000 stands out as a moment when the vibrant landscapes of the nation intertwined with a tragic event involving a remarkable woman named Sana. Aged 44 at the time, Sana was renowned for her profession as a trophy hunter in the expansive forests of South Africa. Little did she know that a fateful encounter with a leopard would alter the course of her life and leave an indelible mark on the memories of those who knew her. Sana's reputation as a skilled trophy hunter earned her widespread recognition in the hunting community. Her expertise and prowess in navigating the South African wilderness made her a sought-after figure for various projects and expeditions. One such venture that would prove to be both a testament to her abilities and a tragic turning point unfolded when a group of researchers enlisted her assistance in a leopard hunting project. This group of researchers, driven by the pursuit of knowledge about the forest and its inhabitants, had gathered information on famed trophy hunters who could lead their ambitious project. Sana's name naturally rose to the top, and she collaborated with her on this endeavor. The researchers communicated the details to Sana, setting the date for their expedition on the 18th of July, commencing at 10 a.m. As the appointed day arrived, Sana stood ready to embark on this tour with the eager researchers. When the clock struck 10 a.m., the researchers came, and Sana warmly welcomed them. Excitement permeated the air as the group set out towards the heart of the forest, anticipating the breathtaking views and encounters with the wild residents of South Africa. Once in the realm of animals, armed with their trophy hunting equipment, the group marveled at the diverse array of creatures that crossed their path. Ever the professional, Sana focused on spotting and capturing the elusive leopard. Her keen eyes spotted the majestic feline in the distance, prompting her to photograph and document the sighting for the researchers meticulously. However, while recording footage with her camera, the idyllic scene took a sudden turn when Sana inadvertently revealed the presence of humans to the leopard. The reflective gleam of the camera's light caught the attention of the big cat, causing it to redirect its attention towards the group. Realizing the imminent danger, Sana sprang into action. Her instincts honed through years of navigating the wild kicked in as she swiftly moved toward the group, urging them to seek refuge in a safe zone. Now aware of the potential threat, the group followed her lead, but tragedy struck in the blink of an eye. Disturbed and agitated, the leopard attacked with a ferocity that caught everyone off guard. Sana, valiantly attempting to shield the group, found herself in the crosshairs of the enraged predator. In the chaos that ensued, the leopard inflicted severe injuries on Sana, leaving her in a dangerous situation. Desperation set in as Sana attempted to defend herself. Despite her efforts to use her firearm, the leopard leaped at her once again, inflicting further harm. In the end, Sana managed to break free, but the injuries she sustained were severe, particularly to her legs. Horrified by the sudden events, the researchers quickly summoned forest staff to the scene, providing details of the attack and Sana's location. When the forest staff arrived, they discovered a gruesome sight, 
Having retreated, the leopard had left a devastation trail in its wake. Sana, in a state of critical condition, succumbed to her injuries. The news of her tragic death reverberated through the group, each member grappling with the disbelief that their esteemed guide had fallen victim to the very wildlife they sought to study and understand. The news of Sana's death sent shockwaves beyond the immediate circle of the researchers. Her family, unable to reconcile with the reality of her demise, struggled to come to terms with the loss of a woman who had lived her life with passion and courage. Sana's untimely end was a stark reminder of the wild's unpredictable and often dangerous nature, where even the most seasoned individuals could face the unexpected. In the aftermath of this tragic incident, Sana's legacy persisted. Her story became a cautionary tale, emphasizing the need for careful consideration and respect when venturing into the natural habitats of wild animals. The incident also sparked conversations within the hunting and conservation communities about the ethical implications of trophy hunting and the responsibility that comes with interacting with wildlife. Sana's passion for the wild, though ultimately leading to her demise, impacted those who had the privilege of knowing her. Her tale served as a reminder of the delicate balance between humanity and nature, urging individuals to approach the wild with humility and a deep understanding of the creatures that call it home. As the pages of history turned, Sana's story became a chapter etched with tragedy and lessons. This narrative continues to resonate within the annals of South Africa's complex and ever-evolving relationship with its natural heritage. In the remote village of Mfuwe, the passage of time seemed to linger in the air, trapped between the earth and the sky. Nestled within the eastern province of Zambia, Mfuwe existed far removed from the bustling urban centers and modern amenities that would eventually shape its future. It was a place untouched by the waves of tourism that would later flood its borders. The year was 1991, when Mfuwe had not yet claimed its status as a popular getaway to the renowned South Luangwa National Park. The village stood as a humble outpost where simplicity and tradition intertwined. The streets were not yet teeming with curious visitors seeking a glimpse of the majestic wildlife that awaited them beyond the village's borders. In the stillness of the landscape, the village of Mfuwe yearned for what was to come, for the transformation that would bring both progress and challenge. The lively mosaic of the natural world, adorned with its wild splendor and unpredictable dangers, lay just beyond the village's threshold awaiting the day when it would be discovered and revered by those who sought its wonders. Two boys found themselves immersed in their playful antics as the scorching sun began to dip below the horizon, casting a warm orange glow over the plains. Oblivious to the fading light, their laughter echoed through the tall grass, carrying the innocence of youth. But as the dusk settled upon the land, the once joyful atmosphere grew eerie. The boys, realizing they had lost track of time, knew they had to make their way back to the safety of the village before darkness consumed them. Their excitement waned, replaced by a sense of urgency. The vast expanse of the plains stretched before them, the road splitting into two paths ahead. And then, a terrifying instant. A great lion materialized from the shadows. It lunged at the unsuspecting boys with lightning speed striking fear into their hearts. In that fateful moment, the world ceased to turn as the lion's jaws descended upon the young boy with a terrifying force. Time, once an unwavering stream, shattered into a thousand fragmented shards, frozen in a suspended reality of horror. The boy's innocent laughter, once a joyful symphony, now echoed only in the depths of memory. The lion's teeth, sharp and merciless, sank into skin, muscles, and bone, tearing the boy's fragile flesh apart and extinguishing a life that held so much promise. It was a heart-wrenching scene etched into the chronicles of tragedy, where the fragility of existence clashed with the unyielding brutality of nature. In the cruel blink of an eye, the boy's vibrant spirit was silenced, forever lost to the insatiable hunger of the predator. As the metallic scent of blood hung heavy in the air, the remaining boy stood frozen, his heart pounding like a captive bird desperate to escape its cage. Terror coursed through his veins, his mind a whirlwind of primal instincts urging him to flee. 
Yet amidst the swirling chaos of fear, a flicker of resilience ignited within him. Summoning every ounce of strength, the boy resisted the urge to turn and run. Instead, fueled by a determination and a deep-rooted desire for survival, he pushed himself forward, his legs propelling him with a desperate urgency. Each stride, an embodiment of hope, carried him closer to the lifeline he sought, the help that awaited beyond the boundaries of the plains. His desperate sprint led him to the game rangers stationed nearby, and between ragged breaths, he managed to relay the horrifying events that had unfolded. The rangers, their hearts heavy with the weight of the news, sprung into action, their rifles drawn as they rushed to the scene. But as they arrived, the lion had vanished, leaving only fragments of torn clothing and the haunting silence of death. The rangers searched the surrounding area, their eyes scanning the tall grass, hoping to find any trace of the predator, but it remained elusive, slipping away like a shadow into the night. Days turned into weeks and the lion's reign of terror continued. Its insatiable hunger drove it to claim more lives, indiscriminately targeting unsuspecting victims. A woman, innocently gathering supplies for her evening meal, met her tragic end at the hands of the fearsome predator. Even a young man seeking refuge in the game ranger's office was ambushed and brutally attacked, his life taken. With each passing attack, the village grew more fearful, their hearts burdened with sorrow and despair. Game rangers and professional hunters ventured forth, determined to end the ruthless lion's rampage, but their efforts were in vain. The lion's cunning and evasive nature seemed to mock their every move, slipping away just as they thought they had it cornered. Whispers of the supernatural began circulating among the villagers, a desperate attempt to rationalize the lion's relentless savagery. Some believed it to be a demon, a shape-shifting sorcerer using its powers to terrorize the innocent. The once majestic lion had become an evil force, a living nightmare haunting their every thought. But hope emerged in the form of Wayne Hosek, a seasoned hunter from California. Fate had led him to Mfue, and he was determined to end the reign of terror. Setting a trap with a laundry bag belonging to one of the lion's victims, an attempting stash of hippo meat, Hosek waited patiently for the lion's arrival. Days turned into weeks as he lay hidden, his senses attuned to every rustle of the wind, every whisper of the grass. He had become part of the landscape, his presence merging with the primal rhythm of the wild. And then it happened. Lulled into a false sense of security, the lion approached the bait. Hosek's heart pounded in his chest as he aimed his rifle, his finger resting gently on the trigger. A surge of adrenaline coursed through his veins as he pulled it, the deafening shot reverberating through the air. The bullet found its mark, piercing the lion's left shoulder, causing it to crumple in fur and claws. The village's prayers had been answered. Their nightmare had finally met its demise. Elation mixed with relief as the villagers swarmed out of their homes, spitting on and beating the lion's lifeless body. They celebrated the victory over the beast that had claimed so many lives, desperate to ensure its supernatural powers were banished forever. The man-eater of Mfue, once a feared predator, now lay stuffed and displayed at the Field Museum in Chicago. Alongside it, Jasleen's laundry sack served as a grim reminder of the lion's ferocity. Wayne Hosek would recount his experience in a memoir, immortalizing the tale of the man-eater. The legend of the man-eater of Mfue would persist, passed down through generations as a cautionary tale. Children would be warned of the dangers of venturing out after sundown, of the lurking predators that prowled the wilderness. In the end, the story of the man-eater served as a stark reminder that nature's beauty hides a primal darkness, and survival often depends on the keenness of one's senses and the respect for the untamed. The savannah stretched like a golden sea under the African sun in the heart of the Maasai Mara National Reserve in Kenya. Maya, a young and passionate tour guide committed to wildlife conservation, led a group of excited tourists in an open roof safari jeep. 
The tour brought them to the renowned Milcora Point, known for frequent lion sightings. As the jeep rumbled across the dusty trails, the tourists marveled at the vastness of the Maasai Mara. The air was filled with sounds of the wild, the distant calls of birds, the rustle of grass, and the occasional trumpeting of elephants. Ben, a young boy among the tourists, sat wide-eyed, his enthusiasm palpable as he soaked in the African wilderness. The jeep stopped near a cluster of acacia trees, a location famous for its resident lion pride. With keen eyes, Maya spotted movement in the grass, a majestic and imposing male lion guarding his recently born cubs. The tourists, including young Ben, eagerly leaned forward, cameras clicking in a synchronized rhythm as they witnessed the regal family in their natural habitat. The atmosphere in the Jeep was charged with excitement. While sharing insights about the lion's behavior and the importance of protecting these magnificent creatures, Maya emphasized the need for responsible tourism. In all of the spectacle before them, the tourists nodded in agreement. It was a moment of connection between humans and nature, a harmonious coexistence that Maya sought to foster. However, the scene's tranquility was about to be shattered by an unforeseen event. Ben, caught in the thrill of the moment, grabbed a water bottle and impulsively tossed it out of the jeep window, aiming for a spot near the lion. The plastic bottle hit the ground with a soft thud, disturbing the serene environment. The male lion, startled by the unexpected intrusion, turned his piercing gaze toward the source of the disturbance. His protective instincts activated, sensing a potential threat to his vulnerable cubs. Initially oblivious to the consequences of Ben's impulsive action, the tourists were soon gripped by unease as the majestic lion rose to his feet. In a sudden surge of primal instinct, the lion charged toward the jeep, his massive frame moving with unparalleled grace. The tourists, caught off guard, were now faced with the reality of sharing space with a wild and potentially dangerous creature. Panic spread through the open roof safari vehicle like wildfire, amplified by the raw fear emanating from the tourists. As the lion closed the distance, the atmosphere in the jeep shifted from awe to sheer terror. The tourists, including Ben, began screaming, their voices echoing across the savanna. The lion, agitated by the din and perceiving the jeep as a threat to his cubs, intensified his charge his eyes ablaze with fear and aggression. The lion attacked Ben, sitting on the window, resulting in scratches on his face and shoulder. The other tourists became more frightened and started screaming. Amidst the chaos, Maya, recognizing the imminent danger, acted with swift determination. She spotted a metal rod used for emergencies in a corner of the Jeep. Without hesitation, she grabbed it and struck it against the side of the Jeep creating a loud metallic clang. The sharp sound cut through the chaos, momentarily disorienting the charging lion. The diversion worked and the lion hesitated, his momentum disrupted by the unexpected noise. Her heart pounding, Maya repeated the action, drawing the lion's attention away from the terrified tourists. The lion, torn between his protective instincts and the confusion caused by the sudden loud noises, stopped his charge and retreated a few steps. With the immediate danger somewhat abated, Maya continued to strike the metal rod against the side of the jeep, creating a rhythm that both fascinated and confused the lion. Slowly, the majestic creature turned away, his focus shifting back to the safety of his cubs in the shelter of the acacia trees. In the aftermath of the encounter, the tourists, their faces pale and hearts racing, breathed a sigh of relief. Ben, however, bore the consequences of his impulsive action. Maya, still shaken by the intensity of the situation, assessed the injuries and acted swiftly. Ben was frightened and unshakable. Now a sanctuary of fear and relief, the safari jeep retraced its path out of the lion's territory. The injured boy was rushed to the nearest hospital for immediate medical attention. The Maasai Mara National Reserve incident became a national tragedy, making headlines across Kenya. It stirred discussions about the dangers of human-wildlife conflict 
and the responsibilities of exploring nature's untamed beauty. The sacrifices made by those who protect and conserve wildlife were brought into sharp focus. After receiving medical treatment, Ben symbolized the need for responsible tourism. The scars on his face and shoulder served as a visible reminder of the consequences of disregarding the boundaries set by nature. Maya, deeply affected by the incident, intensified her efforts to educate tourists about the importance of respectful interaction with wildlife. The sun still dipped below the Maasai Mara's golden horizon, painting the endless plains in fiery hues. Yet a shadow lingered over the reserve's usual symphony of life. News of the encounter, hushed whispers carried on the wind, snaked through camps and lodges, settling like dust in throats and heavy on hearts. Once thrummed with anticipation for safaris and sundowners, the air held a new note of caution, a sobering undercurrent to the thrill of the wild. Conversations around crackling campfires, usually lively with tales of majestic sightings and close calls, were sad. Faces tanned and etched with lines of adventure now bore a flicker of introspection, a newfound awareness of the delicate dance between human curiosity and the untamed pulse of nature. Maya's bravery, etched in the memory of every witness, became a talisman of respect, a reminder that the wilderness, for all its breathtaking beauty, demanded not just awe, but reverence. Even as the day faded, its dying embers casting long shadows across the savanna, the story of the lion and the guide resonated. A silent pact woven into the very fabric of the Maasai Mara, In the heart of Kenya, where the golden savanna meets the azure sky, lies the imaginary yet breathtaking Kichaka National Park. Renowned for its sprawling landscapes and rich wildlife, Kichaka has become a sanctuary for those who seek an intimate encounter with nature's wonders. Emily Carter is a 32-year-old American tour guide known for her fiery red hair and boundless enthusiasm for African wildlife. Joseph Caprono, a seasoned Kenyan guide whose deep-set eyes and gentle demeanor reflected his profound connection with the land. With a degree in wildlife biology and a lifelong dream of exploring Africa, Emily found her calling in Kichaka. Joseph, a local Maasai, had grown up on these plains and knew them like the back of his hand. August 12, 1999, dawned with a promise of adventure. The air was crisp and filled with the sounds of the waking savanna. Emily and Joseph greeted their group of tourists with warm smiles, setting the tone for a day of exploration. As they journeyed through Kichaka, Emily's knowledge and passion were evident. She spoke of the balance of ecosystems, the role of each animal, and the beauty of coexistence. The group was captivated by sightings of grazing giraffes, playful antelopes, and a distant herd of elephants moving like a slow gray river. Near midday, they stopped by a serene river for lunch. The tourists were buzzing with excitement, sharing photos and experiences. Watching a group of hippos wallowing, Emily felt a deep sense of contentment. Little did she know that the day would take an unforeseeable turn. The afternoon in Kichaka National Park was unfolding under a serene sky, with the sun casting elongated shadows across the savanna. Emily Carter, alongside her colleague Joseph Caprono, guided their group of eager tourists, their eyes feasting upon a pride of lions resting in the distance. The air was filled with the soft clicks and whirs of cameras and hushed voices as the group observed the majestic creatures. Ever passionate and wanting to offer the best experience, Emily edged slightly closer to the side of the open-top vehicle for a clearer view. She reminded her group to remain seated and maintain a respectful silence. The lions, seemingly undisturbed, lazed under the African sun, their tawny coats blending into the golden grass. Without warning, the tranquility shattered. An enormous male lion, previously unseen, charged with a burst of terrifying speed from the tall grass. Its target was unexpectedly Emily, who stood closest to the edge. The lion's powerful body collided with hers, its massive paws striking her with such force that she was instantly pulled from the vehicle. Panic ensued. The tourists, frozen in shock, screamed in horror. With years of experience but never having faced such a situation, Joseph scrambled to react. He shouted, attempting to distract the lion, but the animal was undeterred. The lion's jaws clamped down on Emily's arm, dragging her away from the vehicle. She struggled, her screams piercing the air, mixing with the roars of the lion. 
The pride roused by the commotion began to stir, their eyes fixed on the unfolding scene. Emily, though in immense pain and fear, fought bravely. She tried to hit the lion to free herself from its unyielding grip, but the beast's strength was overwhelming. The lion dragged her further into the grass, away from any hope of immediate rescue. Joseph, realizing the gravity of the situation, urgently called for help while trying to keep the remaining lions at bay. In a state of shock, the tourists were urged to stay quiet to avoid attracting more attention from the pride. As the lion dragged Emily further, her struggles weakened. The majestic creature, embodying nature's raw and untamed power, seemed oblivious to the chaos it had caused. Within moments, the grassy savanna hid them from view, leaving behind a trail of disturbed earth and a group of horrified onlookers. Emergency services, upon receiving the distress call, arrived with haste. The park rangers, alongside medical personnel, launched a frantic search. They found Emily some distance from the site of the attack, grievously injured and unconscious. Upon hearing the approaching vehicles, the lion had retreated into the savanna. Despite the swift and efficient medical response, Emily's injuries were beyond recovery. She had suffered significant trauma and heartbreakingly succumbed to her wounds before she could be airlifted to a hospital. The park was immediately closed and the tourists, still shocked, were escorted back to the park headquarters. Joseph, though experienced in the ways of the savanna, was deeply shaken. He recounted the incident to the authorities, his voice tinged with disbelief and sorrow. He couldn't fathom why the lion had attacked. It was an anomaly, a rare deviation from the predictable behavior of wildlife in Kichaka. Kenyan wildlife officials were deeply affected by the tragedy. They extended their heartfelt condolences to Emily's family and friends, reiterating that such incidents were sporadic. They assured the public that comprehensive measures were being implemented to ensure the safety of both visitors and wildlife in the park. The lion, identified as a young male likely acting out of confusion and fear, was located and carefully relocated to a more isolated part of the park, away from tourist routes. This harrowing event served as a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of wildlife and the inherent risks in wilderness areas. It prompted a thorough review of safety protocols in Kichaka, and sparked broader discussions about coexistence with nature's untamed inhabitants. Emily's tragic end catalyzed change, ensuring that her love for the wild would not be forgotten and would continue to inspire safer, more respectful wildlife tourism. The news of Emily Carter's tragic demise echoed across continents. Tributes poured in, honoring her love for wildlife and her commitment to conservation. After the tragedy, discussions about wildlife tourism, safety protocols, and the ethical boundaries of human-animal interactions gained momentum. A foundation in Emily's name was established, focusing on educating tourists about responsible wildlife engagement and supporting conservation efforts in Kichaka. The foundation also started a scholarship for young women aspiring to careers in wildlife biology, a fitting tribute to Emily's life and dreams. Kichaka National Park reopened in the following years with new safety measures and an educational center named after Emily. Visitors to the park would often hear her story, a poignant reminder of the respect and caution required when entering the domain of the wild. Under the vast Kenyan sky, where the sun sets in a blaze of colors, Emily's spirit lingered. In the roars of lions, the rustling of grass, and the gentle breeze, her love for Kichaka lived on a testament to the complex, often unfathomable relationship between humans and the untamed world. In the bustling town of Kabwe, Zambia, where traditions are interwoven with modernity, Samuel Sam Tendeka had carved a niche for himself. At 59, he was not just another face in the crowd. He was Kabwe's most sought-after guide, leading adventures into the heart of Zambia's wild terrains. Year after year, tourists flocked to the town, drawn by tales of its breathtaking landscapes and diverse wildlife. And for many, an expedition was only complete with Sam's guiding hand. His deep connection with the land and tales of past adventures added a unique touch to every journey he led. One such expedition saw Sam leading a group of thrill-seekers on a camping trip, promising them an immersive experience in Zambia's wilderness. Their journey began promisingly, with clear skies and the vast savanna stretching out before them. Days were filled with treks across varying terrains, campfire stories, and the thrill of being in the wild. However, as is often the case with nature, 
unpredictability loomed large. On the third day, while the group was enjoying a midday meal near a serene waterhole, a deep roar echoed, sending chills down their spines. A majestic male lion emerged from the thicket, his mane glistening in the sun, eyes locked onto the group. Panic ensued, but Sam, drawing from his years of experience, quickly shouted commands, instructing the group to form a tight circle and hold their ground. The lion, possibly curious or sensing an intrusion into its territory, circled the group, its intent unclear. Recognizing the immediate threat, Sam picked up a branch, set it aflame from the campfire, and faced the lion, trying to steer it away. In a sudden turn of events, the lion charged, its target clear, Sam. The two clashed, Sam fending off the beast using the flaming branch, but not without cost. The aftermath of the brief yet intense encounter left Sam with injuries to his leg and side. The group, now in shock but realizing the gravity of the situation, quickly administered first aid. Their relaxed camping trip had transformed into a tale of survival and the unpredictable nature of the wild. With the immediate threat averted, the group rallied around Sam, their admiration for his bravery evident. The decision was unanimous. They would camp at their current spot for the night, ensuring a safe perimeter. As darkness enveloped the savannah, the group sat around the campfire its flames dancing and casting long shadows. The day's events were a testament to the unpredictability of nature and the fine line between awe and danger. Despite his pain, Sam spoke of respect for the wild and understanding its inhabitants. His words, filled with wisdom, resonated with the group, turning the evening into a reflection on the balance of life in the wilderness. The night in the Zambian wilderness was a symphony of sounds, the distant hoot of an owl, the rustling of grass as nocturnal creatures moved about, and the soft hum of the group's conversations merged into a serene lullaby. With its warm glow, the campfire became the heart of their camp, drawing everyone close, their faces illuminated by its dancing flames. Despite the fire's comfort, the group was acutely aware of the vast, unpredictable world beyond their circle of light. Sam's injuries, though not life-threatening, served as a poignant reminder of the day's events. The thrill-seekers, once eager for adventure, now found themselves humbled by the raw power of nature. As dawn approached, whispers of the previous day's encounter with the lion spread through the camp. Once united in their pursuit of adventure, the group was now divided. Some wished to cut the expedition short, while others, inspired by Sam's resilience, wanted to continue, albeit with heightened caution. Sam, leaning on a makeshift staff, stepped forward to address the group. He emphasized that nature is impartial, neither favoring nor opposing them. Throughout their journey, they witnessed the beauty and hazards of the natural world. Sam encouraged the group to view every step as a valuable lesson, reminding them that they had the choice to either succumb to fear or progress with understanding and respect. The group, hanging on to his every word, realized the truth in his sentiment. After much discussion, a consensus was reached. They would continue their expedition with renewed purpose and respect for the land they tread upon. The following days saw the group navigating the savannah with heightened awareness. Birds in flight, the ripple of water, and even the distant roar of a lion all became signals guiding their journey. Sam led with unwavering determination, despite his injuries, his experience evident in every decision. On the final day, as Cobway's familiar landscape appeared on the horizon, the group paused, looking back at the vast wilderness that had been their home. With its golden grasses swaying in the breeze, the savannah stood timeless, indifferent to their presence, yet leaving an indelible mark on each of them. Returning to Cobway, their story spread like wildfire, but instead of a tale of pure adventure, it became a lesson in humility, resilience, and the deep bond between man and nature. Sam's bravery became legendary, but he often downplayed his role, emphasizing the importance of understanding and respecting the wild. Sam, the 59-year-old guide from Cobway, had not just faced off with lions. He had bridged the gap between thrill-seekers 
and the heart of the Zambian wilderness, leaving a legacy that would be remembered for generations. In 2010, tales of a mysterious lion circulated in the heart of Botswana. The lion, dubbed the Phantom of Botswana, was said to roam the city's outskirts, a shadowy figure glimpsed only in the twilight hours. Elias Mwale, a renowned wildlife expert and conservationist, was intrigued. Born in Zambia and having spent most of his life in the African wilderness, Elias had encountered many of the continent's magnificent beasts. But the idea of a lion in the city's periphery was fascinating and alarming. The local authorities, concerned about the safety of the residents, reached out to Elias. They hoped his expertise could shed light on the lion's unusual behavior and, if possible, find a way to guide it back to its natural habitat. Elias began his investigation by visiting the sites of the reported sightings. He found paw prints, remnants of meals, and on one occasion, a haunting roar that echoed in the distance. It became clear that the lion was not just a figment of the city's imagination. One evening, as Elias was setting up motion-sensitive cameras, he had a chance encounter with the elusive creature. The majestic lion stood in a clearing, illuminated by the soft glow of the setting sun. Its eyes, filled with a mix of curiosity and caution, met Elias's. Elias, always carrying a tranquilizer gun for emergencies, realized he had a crucial decision to make. He could tranquilize the lion, ensuring its immediate safety and that of the city's residents. Or he could attempt a more organic approach, using his knowledge and instincts to guide the lion away from the city. Choosing the latter, Elias began to step forward slowly and gently. The lion, intrigued, took a few tentative steps forward. Over the next hour, in a delicate dance of trust and intuition, Elias managed to lead the lion away from the city's edge, using his skills and occasional pieces of meat. However, just as Elias's efforts seemed to succeed, a sudden car horn blared in the distance. Startled, the lion panicked, its wild instincts taking over. In its frenzy, it lunged at Elias, its claws leaving deep gashes on his arm before disappearing into the night. The suddenness of the attack left Elias in shock. Blood oozed from the gashes on his arm, and pain seared through him. The lion's roar shattered the tranquil night, a sound of fear and confusion fading into the distance. Staggering to his feet, Elias managed to apply a makeshift bandage using his shirt. He knew he needed medical attention, but his immediate concern was the lion. The Phantom of Botswana, already disoriented by its proximity to the city, was now in a heightened state of distress. Using his satellite phone, Elias called for assistance. Within minutes, a team from the local wildlife department arrived. They quickly administered first aid and prepared to track the lion. As the search began, Elias, despite his injuries, insisted on leading the team. The city's outskirts were a maze of dense vegetation, abandoned structures, and winding paths. The lion's tracks were visible, but its trail was erratic, indicating heightened stress. Hours passed and the team came upon a dilapidated barn. Soft growls emanated from within. Approaching cautiously, they spotted the lion, its majestic form crouched in a corner, eyes darting around, clearly agitated. A member of the team managed to tranquilize the lion. Elias approached as the majestic creature's eyes drooped, placing a gentle hand on its mane. The lion was relocated to the vast expanses of the Chobe National Park where it could roam freely, away from the dangers and confusions of city life. Elias's injuries took weeks to heal, but the scars remained, a testament to his encounter with the Phantom of Botswana. As for the Phantom of Botswana, it thrived in its new home, its legend living on in the heartbeats of the African plains. <laughs>